five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. This is about space. America's return to space with news and information on our U.S. space program is your host of About Space, David Denault. Welcome, and thanks for joining me today, just five days until Christmas. If you listened to our program last week, About Space reported about meteors in the sky. Well, today, what about the star in the east? Next, as America and the world is listening to About Space Today. Come to the land of orange groves and palm trees. Come to the land of theme parks. Come to the land of sunny beaches and the azure waters of the Atlantic Ocean. So come and visit Florida for lasting memories. Email us. Email david.ddcruiseandtours at gmail.com or call DD Cruise and Tours at 877. 877- 747-8631 for your next family, cruise, or theme park vacation. Let us provide you your next visit with our travel experience, not experimentation. We are members of IATAN and CLIA. Email david.ddcruiseandtours at gmail.com. Serving the Southeast, traveler since 1985. On Friday, December the 23rd, I invite you to join Dawn Meyer, Space Coast News Editor, for a Christmas special. I'm David Denault, and this is a family story to share of a Christmas long ago. So don't miss A Message from the Moon on Christmas Eve and My Christmas Telescope with Dawn Meyer, Friday, December the 23rd. And Merry Christmas! Welcome back. Christians have been celebrating the birth of Christ for more than 2,000 years, and yet there continues to be a mystery about the star which appeared in the east. The story, according to the Bible, says three wise men, or were they actually the astronomers of their time? Or was this just a meteor that was traveling across our galaxy, they saw it and followed it? So what does Rick Larson, a professor, a lawyer, a researcher, and co-producer of the Star of Bethlehem have to say, and what did he learn about the star from the East? Well, when I began the research, I was surprised at how many theories had been put out there. And it makes you wonder, I'm a researcher by trade, it's a, I'm a lawyer, and so you, you think, you know, if everybody looks at the same evidence, shouldn't we arrive at somewhat similar result? But they're all over the deck. And I realized after looking at it closely, the reason for that. And it's because they don't take the Bible very seriously. If you go back to Scripture and you comb through Matthew with a fine-tooth comb, like uh, you're looking for every tiny clue, you can, you can carve out nine characteristics of the biblical star. So when you get those together, that means that we have a fair amount of data. And if you get experts talking about the nine points, well, then we can come to some conclusions. So some of the nine points are obvious. Uh-huh. They're easy. Because when uh, the Magi arrived, they asked this loaded question. They say, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? So that's three clues. Whatever they saw in the sky suggested to them kingship, birth, and the Jewish nation. Okay, that's easy. Mm-hmm. But some of the clues, you know, are a little bit more obscure. Um, for one, they saw the star when they were in the east. They traveled all the way to Jerusalem. Don't know where they came from. Don't know how they traveled. But if they were from Persia, if they came through the Fertile Crescent, we're talking about months. And they arrive in Jerusalem, and they still see the star. So it lasted over time. That's another clue, right? Um, and then, uh, so you put all nine together, though, you can start eliminating things. Things fall out. You can't, it can't be, you know, a shooting star if it lasts over time. Uh, and then we look at the ancient uh, records, and there are lots of other ways to make the study happen. But here's the thing that blows me away. Matthew is no scientist, and yet he wrote his, his gospel and got nine points, which happened. I mean, they're right there in the sky, precisely correlating with what he wrote down. He couldn't have known. This is the Holy Spirit of God. So when he wrote his, his story, his account of the star, it would hold up to scientific scrutiny 2,000 years later 
when we're pressing it extremely hard mm -hmm. and it turns out, my goodness, there are things in the sky that precisely correlate with what he described. Yeah. You know, I, I can't say everybody did. I think probably not, but I, don't, I do know the Romans noticed it because they wound up putting it on a coin, which is a longer story than we can tell here. Huh. But so the Star of Bethlehem actually appears on a Roman coin. Um, but uh, I think it was something that was noticeable but understandable only when explained by experts. Mm -hmm. So while the people in Jerusalem may have seen something of interest, almost certainly did, um, when the Magi arrived and explained it all and put it in context, uh, you know, the solar system and, and the universe itself, is, it operates like a great clock. Everything's extremely regular. Um, and many events recur. Yeah. So if you take a series of events like Matthew describes, any one of those events might well happen again. Um, sometimes on short intervals, sometimes on much longer ones, and sometimes they seem to be aperiodic. You don't know when they will recur. But if you stack nine things up, you get a reducing probability each time you add another improbable event. And so by the time you have nine, you have the recurrence, uh, uh, the likelihood becomes basically nil. And of course, it surrounds the birth of, it'll never happen again, put it that way. Um, but I think the latest scholarship is counter to that. It, it, it ten, tends to indicate that Herod died in 1 BC. And uh, there's a lot of excellent scholarship that's uh, the most recent uh, there. And, uh, and I'm convinced that they're correct. Uh, and so when if di Herod died in one, the, the right years to look. And I try to put all that stuff linked on my website because there's a lot of scholarship behind that. If they go to Bethlehemstar.net, they can access that. But they like mysteries. Anyone will look at a yeah. mystery. That's a great mm -hmm. mystery. In fact, it's historical, it's objective, scientific, but it's entertaining. Yes. Um, and it packs a spiritual wallop. It's like a Trojan horse. So, is Rick Larson's research correct that more than 2,000 years ago, it really did happen? Well, the Monterey Institute for Research in Astronomy thought the planetary conjunctions of 2 BC were more plausible explanation for what the Magi would have seen than events found in earlier details. Larson thinks astronomical events in the 3 to 2 BC fit the evidence found in the Bible. I'd like to hear from you and your thoughts. Email me at david.aboutspacetoday at gmail.com. Again, that's david.aboutspacetoday at gmail.com. And on behalf of Dawn Meyer and our entire podcast and live stream broadcast crews, we wish you and your families around the globe and here in the U.S. a very merry and blessed Christmas. I'm David Denault, and this has been About Space Today. So